So in today's video, I'm going to walk you through another real world use case of utilizing AI for enterprise businesses. And in this example, we're going to walk through the example of setting up a basic IVR system using Twilio. And then we're going to take it off the rails and essentially connect it using utilizing Google Dialogflow, which I'll walk through once we get there. For the basic IVR system setup utilizing Twilio, it's very straightforward. Uh, essentially, we need to pip install a package, uh, which is Flask Twilio. And within this package, it essentially has everything that we'll need within this. It's going to um, essentially launch most things uh, related to Twilio within this package. Twilio is a big company. They know exactly what they're doing. So uh, very straightforward. We just need to have access to Python in this instance. And then from there, uh, we can essentially set up our app. Um, and then in this instance, we're going to set up a Flask app. Uh, and then we're going to have it be a Twilio voice responder. So it'll have, a, we'll just call uh, from the package Twilio voice response. And then we'll set up our voice routing. So uh, like uh, we can have the pre-built voices and the pre-built agents all built from Twilio. It would say, you know, welcome to our company, press one for sales, press two for support. We can change that uh, dialogue, set up anything that we want here from the back end, and then we can set up the full back end here in Python, right? Um, so we can, uh, if you press one, then it's going to say you selected sales, please wait while you connect to you, while we connect you. If you press two, then you selected support, please wait while we connect you. Uh, if you press anything besides one or two, it'll say, sorry, I didn't understand that choice. And you go through, uh, and then uh, essentially the rest of this is just simulating uh, this um, for purposes of this demo, right? So you would want to take off this end piece uh, for your particular situation uh, and then configure it with any sort of uh, basic Twilio that you would want. Um, in this instance, uh, Google Colab has issues with running Flask. So we're going to run this code locally. I have it here, and I'll give you the example in Colab, but I want to run it locally, which is what I'll do here. And then so uh, I already have it running, yeah. as you can see here. Uh, and then I just uh, tick the same, the same code, uh, and I copied it locally. Um, and then I have it as a local Flask app that we can open. When you first open it, it's going to be URL not found. As you can see here, I've put where exactly uh, you want to go. And then if you change the um, home URL, if your uh, like home URL isn't um, 127.00.01, uh, and then you're not utilizing 1,000, you change any of this, you want to change these URLs. But uh, so we can go here. Uh, and then once we do that, um, we can see here, you know, so you pressed one in this instance, simulating in pressing one, you selected sales, please wait while we connect to you. And it uh, dials, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. And then same thing, simulate support. Please wait while we connect you. You selected support. Or the other option, uh, which is invalid, right? Simulating invalid. Uh, I didn't understand that choice. Uh, and then uh, that's essentially how the system works. And that's essentially it. That's our uh, very basic IVR system, right? And then uh, if we want just essentially the, the, most basic system possible uh, and we're just looking for really basic IVR this is really it I've walked you through it right and I've uh, gone through this for a lot of years like um, it I, IVR technology very specifically like when it comes to the blending of telephony and IT uh, there's a lot of so there's a separation between the two right like a lot of people uh, that get into IT, they don't develop telephony experience. And then so telephony kind of becomes like this black hole. But it's really just at very much at this point, especially because of Twilio, right? This is all based off of Twilio. So it's all a digital backbone. Uh, so it's all just API calls. It's, 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 it, it, we're utilizing API calls to just like we would to, like if we're utilizing API calls to uh, open AI. It's the same type of thing, right? Like uh, it doesn't have to be more complex than the API calls. And then same thing, like so. Within that, we're oh, like the next step of um, adding Google Dialog Flow is very straightforward within that, right? It's just adding another API call within this. In this instance, we add the API call to Google Dialog Flow. And so, uh, 
I often, um, you know, I have zero horses in the race whatsoever in any category. So with that being said, my upfront preference is always going to be um, this back end system, like what we're looking at here and what we're working in in, in Python or um, any other back end programming language, right? Because uh, this is free and accessible to me, but I understand that this is not uh, accessible to everyone, right? And especially within a large organization, uh, and especially within e even within your IT department of a large organization, you don't have want to have everyone possible that will be working on the back end of your IVR system <laughs> dealing with it in Python, right? That's just not uh, how the world actually operates. So you want to essentially add a you want to let's say beef up this functionality quite considerably, but then also add a considerable like front end and a dashboard. We want to take it a away from Python. Uh, perhaps you've been looking through this and you don't exactly know what's going on at this point of the video, right? So let's essentially, this next piece of code here, this backend is just updating and upgrading the code so that it also works uh, with, uh, in this instance, Google Dialogflow. And then in this instance, it's utilizing Google Dialogflow to call the NLP client or the natural language processing client to essentially analyze the sentiment of the uh, call analysis. And that's what it will do in this instance is it will just do basic sentiment analysis. Uh, it will, and based off of the voice uh, that you test out and you go through, it will set that up for you. And then so uh, in order to run this code on the back end, it's very straightforward, right? You would just essentially take this code and then there's a few things that you need to put in here. You need to put in your own Dialogflow project ID, your Dialogflow uh, language code, which I'll assume will be English, and then your session ID, uh, your unique session ID for Dialogflow. And then, so where do you get those two variables that you'll need, the project ID and the session ID? You go to Google Dialogflow, and then that's here, right? Um, and then, so in this instance, I'm going to showcase for you Dialogflow essentials. <laughs> There's um, Dialogflow, like CX Plus, uh, and an even more advanced version of Dialogflow. But to me, like in and of itself, if you've never seen any of this and you're seeing this for the first time, Dialogflow is <laughs> really cool, right? So uh, if you're, uh, if you haven't. Uh, if you haven't kept up to date with uh, IVR technology and what it has progressed to uh, outside of like I always like the biggest one the most straightforward two are uh, like Salesforce and AWS they seem to be like the big ones right like the big uh, behemoths in this category um, but so like um, what does a company like Google operate or offer within this and essentially they offer like really streamlined and easy to use uh, agent platform, which is why I'm utilizing Google as opposed to like AWS or something else for this plat this uh, demo, because it's honestly far less steps to set up and far easier to set up uh, in this instance a Google Dialogflow project um, than anything else, right? So essentially we, we, we set up our project and then I've created this project, I've created it, it's called Test Testerson, and then like uh, without that, like you can't add, have any white spaces within your project name, but so we have this right here, this is our project ID, uh, Test Testerson dash PI 9R, and then so I just need to pop that into the system over here or into our code wherever I'm putting the code in. And then I just need to uh, add that from there. Uh, I just need the unique session ID. But so everything else from here, we can do from the front end, right? And this is what I want to showcase and, and um, why I'm utilizing this. So for 90% of your organization, they'll be like utilizing and playing around with this as opposed to, and like they won't ever touch your Python code on the back end, right? This won't be the back end to them. This will be the back end to them. Uh, and then uh, this will be uh, is essentially is a GUI in and of itself. <laughs> and then uh, from here, it's got its own format. So it's intents, entities, knowledge, fulfillment, and integrations. And it's basically um, exactly what you would think, right? Con uh, an intent is essentially like um, uh, what like what like what you would expect someone to do, like what like what someone's uh, intention is or expectation is. So um, like if you, uh, I have this. Uh, 
uh, default test that I've created. And then so intents are first and uh, foremost and primarily tied to events. And then so I set this up as a telephony and, and telephony based event. But um, again, like the within this, they make it very straightforward. Uh, so anything that you would think of that is that you would put in your mind with regards towards IVR, they kind of put in here. So it's very Google science. <laughs> and of course, so Google Assistant, uh, a very science towards Google Assistant, but then uh, Facebook, Slack, Kick, Viber, Telegram, and Google Chat um, uh, are the what else you can do besides telephony. <laughs> so it does give you some other options besides telephony there. Uh, again, it's slanted towards Google, like and, and just like every, all of the other ones, right? Um, and then from there, you have your training phrases. Uh, and then so you can uh, train the intent. Like I, I don't have any added training phrases in this example, but so you would just give it like templates of phrases that like uh, you want it to say. So in this instance, uh, what I said is this is a test test. And then it's response was can you say it again because it doesn't doesn't have any phrases or any training on this is a test test but if I had given it um, uh, intent or training intent on this is a test test it could say anything from there right like it could say um, Roger Roger one two three <laughs> you know whatever the uh, training intent is that I, I train it on from there and I would just add the training phrases here and then this is all GUI based on this front end right which makes it just very straightforward so it's just you just type in whatever you would want from there and then you can also add um, actions and parameters. Um, and then from here, it's you just give it an action name, whether it's required or not, um, and then a parameter name, entity. So all, again, like this, if you're familiar with like uh, Salesforce or any sort of like uh, Microsoft, whatever you're, uh, I'm assuming you would be utilizing Google in this instance, that a majority of your backend is Google, but you never know. Um, but so if you're utilizing any sort of backend system, this should be, you know, very straightforward to you um, as far as on the enterprise side. Um, and then you have your responses. I just put, you know, this is a test response and then various variant test response one. Um, and then you could add, you know, full responses. Um, and then fulfillment is done through like, it's for web services and then like calling, like uh, calling a web service to your backend. Um, and then so you can do that as well if you want to uh, add essentially more advanced logic. Um, and then just from here highlighting as well, you can add entities which are agents. Um, so this will be, you know, really big if you want to add um, any sort of like uh, agents, which would be like uh, objects or, or uh, objects or apps um, to to um, your system and you can utilize custom or system based entities. Then you have knowledge base, uh, which is it, they, whenever they say it's in beta uh, like this, uh, when you click it, uh, like it's a cool thing, right? Like just to, like so you know, like like if it's in beta, you either have access to it or you don't within your system. Uh, like just like assume that you don't have access to it unless you do, like you knowingly have access to it. Um, and then uh, fulfillment is uh, what we was talking about there, which is like webhooks, right? So, so it's just uh, if you you want to enable webhooks very straightforward you can just do it here so you do it straight here from your GUI um, and then if you want to do inline editing I should turn that off there we go <laughs> uh, and then so it'll auto disable uh, inline editing so you have to do some stuff to, to uh, mess it up and, and auto turn that on so that's pretty cool um, and then you have integrations right so these are the pre-built integrations um, that are, are uh, uh, built into the, the phone tree so uh, uh, it's um, Avaya audio codes signal wire Vox implant and the dialogue flow gateway genesis cloud slack i'm not going to go through all of these um and then of course twilio <laughs> and then uh spark skype um twitter uh, is on there and then kick um, and then just like other ones who highlight here is pre-built agents. Um, and then, so I think this is like the last thing and, and like, uh, probably one of the biggest features that you would want to utilize for and like a biggest selling point for dialogue flow essentials within itself. Right. And then, so especially for, uh, enterprise organizations in 2025, <laughs> this would be a key for you. So, um, whatever pre-built agent that you're looking for. So you have a lot in this instance, alarms, app management, currency, coffee shop, car, events, dining out, flights. There's quite a few, right? Um, smart home, tourism, weather, volume, video, 
web search, etc. And then so these are just like you literally just need to import these and you can view the details as well. Um, and then it'll create your agent like directly from the template, right? So really cool, uh, really simple and easy to use. So the benefit of Dialogflow Essentials uh, or Dialogflow overall is that this allows you to uh, supercharge your whole entire IVR system. And then so for most people, for your admins, for like access, like all people outside of the uh, one developer that you need to uh, have access to the very back end that like will once in a while need to update something here on the very back end of the code most of the time uh, for your admin and even for your IT team, this is going to be um, your back end uh, and whatever the back end is. I'm just showcasing in this instance, um, Google Dialogflow. Um, and then so in this instance, this is a walkthrough of essentially taking your IVR from essentially a basic IVR, utilizing your basic Twilio setup to supercharging it. Um, and then in this instance, again, so we're utilizing the agent, we're utilizing the agents um, in this instance, and then and the intent, and so our agent that we're utilizing is that um, intent flow, right? So, um, but we could change the agent. Uh, we have access to uh, essentially uh, any of these pre-built agents that we would want to add to our project. So we can update it here within our project and then we would update it here on the back end. And then, so that's important too, that we, we would want to make sure that the updates do sync up. Um, so any sort of like major updates that we do make here, we need to make sure like we don't break anything back here. So we do need to um, involve the dev for situations like that, but for any sort of uh, small updates, things like that, for anything like for day, day to day, it's all going to be here, uh, which is cool uh, for your average user. Uh, and then so if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.